We are in Microsoft Word 2019. I'm going to show you in just a very short amount of time how to create a cool table of contents for your paper. Here's one of my college papers from years ago, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a table of contents at the very top of my paper. We're going to need to be in our home tab at the top that you see here. And what I'm going to do is go with this first heading. It says TCPIP security. All right, I'm going to highlight that by left clicking and dragging over it. And you see this style section here. This is what we want. And you see there's different headings and other types of things underneath this style. So I'm going to choose heading one. There we go. And now I want to choose to center that because off to the left doesn't make sense for a heading. And I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to choose another one. Let's choose the second one. And I'll choose heading one once again and I will center it. So we're getting close though, so don't worry. We're gonna to get to the table of contents here shortly. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to highlight this third one, but instead of choosing heading one, we're going to choose heading two. And once again, I'm going to center that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish the rest of this paper and just do some heading ones and some heading twos. And when I get to the end, then I'm gonna create the table of contents. So the difference between the heading one and the heading two is heading two would maybe a sub section of heading one. So heading one might be a major chapter, whereas heading two might be more like a uh, sub portion of that particular chapter. So I'm just randomly going through and making all of these changes. And when we get to the end, we'll create our table of contents. We'll also see a heading three, take a look at that. And that would be even further down in importance, but we still want to make it so it shows up as a type of heading. Now, after we create a heading three, guess what? Heading four shows up. So we can continue on. If I choose heading four, a heading five option will show up as well. But I'm just going to stop at three, but you have the idea now on how that all works. And now we have a lot of different things selected as headings. I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to go to the top where it says references and I'm going to select that and we see table of contents. So if I click on the drop down list, we see automatic table one and automatic table two. However, you can customize them, which we'll take a look at in a little bit. I'm going to choose the automatic table one option. And if I scroll up, take a look, it automatically created my table of contents. And we see heading ones, for instance, and we see some heading twos underneath the heading ones. And then you also see some heading threes that I picked at the very bottom. And you can tell the type of heading they are based on where they are positioned underneath the parent right above it. We also see what's kind of cool over to the right. It showed, shows up with what page that particular heading is on. So that makes it easy to find very quickly. Now, if I made a change, such as I went down to my second or third option and said, you know what, I don't want this one to be a heading two. I want it to be a heading one. I'll just click on heading one, center it again, go back up to the very top, click inside the box, and choose Update Table. There we go. Now it's moved that subheading to a main heading. If I change my mind on the type of table of contents, I can change it without having to start all over again simply by clicking this drop down and choosing automatic table two. And now it looks like automatic table two. If I would like to change the words table of contents, I can delete them, I can edit them. So I'll just type in table of contents for document. Just so you can see how you can change the way it looks. Now, if I want to change this section, you don't want to do it here because you can't. What you want to do is you want to go and change any one of these headings down in the document itself, click update table, and then you'll see those changes here. But the table of contents heading at the very top, that one you can edit directly. Let's say we'd like to customize this table of contents. So we want to make sure that we've selected the table and we're at the references tab at the top and we'll click on table of contents and we'll choose custom table of contents. Here we can make changes such as showing or not showing the page numbers, right aligning those page numbers. We can see now that the page numbers get moved off to the left a little bit, but of course that doesn't make as much sense, but we can see what it looks like. 
There we go. Not quite as exciting looking. We'll click on the back button just so we undo that. Let's go back to table of contents, custom. And if we see an option for the tab leader, that will show us. There we go. The types of tabs that we see here. So it changed them to looking more like hash marks. I'm going to go back to custom. And now we see under formats, we see from template. And then we have some options here for classic, distinctive, fancy. Let's choose fancy. Click OK. And look at that. Now we've really changed up the way that our table of contents looks. We'll go back again to table of contents, custom. And we'll just take a look at one more. We'll choose Modern. Pretty nice. Everything's centered, however. You may or may not like that. We'll just go ahead and undo that until we get back to where we were before. And we'll customize it once again. And we see that it shows three levels. And that's because we have the three levels that we created. If we showed four or five, then it would make sense to show four, five, or six, however many levels that you put in. But if you decide to say, hey, you know what? I don't really want to show level three in my table of contents. Yeah, it's going to show up in my document, but just not in my table of contents. So if I click OK, all my level threes go away, and I just end up with level ones and twos. Let's go back to a more classic look of a table of contents. And I'm going to show you how to do something that I think everybody's going to want to do if they want to make this web enabled. So we'll go back to Table of Contents one more time. Click on Custom Table of Contents. And make sure the box is checked for Use Hyperlinks instead of Page Numbers. So we'll click OK on that. And we'll replace it. And look at that. So now we have what looks like links where we can follow. So you can click on the Control plus click to follow that link if we want, and it'll take us right to that location on the page. So for instance, if I click on the TCP IP tutorial, I'll click the Control plus click, and it'll just take, it, take us right to that location. And there it is. If we want to make this web enabled, we can choose File, Save As, and we can choose a web page instead of a Word document. And then we can open it up with our favorite web browser. So we'll just choose web page. We'll give it the same name. And now we see this new web page. So I'm going to right click on that, choose open with. I'll choose Firefox. And there it is, all link enabled. Now, it does change the formatting a little bit, so you may have to play with that. However, having those links taking you right to the location, either in Word or in a web browser, makes it really handy. I'm also going to create another video on how to create a manual table of contents. So if you want to do this a little bit more manually, you can see how to do that as well. But that is how you create an automatic table of contents in Microsoft Word 2019.